We are live here in San Francisco, the Giant Bomb Podcast Studio. It's the Apple Bite Extra Crunchy Podcast with your host, Mr. Brian Tong. Thank you very much, Mr. Stephen Beecham. You're welcome very much. For that energetic staccato-like intro. Yeah, you're, yeah. You're like basically pulling three or four switches at one time. It's Yeah, when I start the show, no um, mere mortal. there's a lot of buttons to yeah. press. There's like audio, there's faders, there's camera switching, there's audio levels. It's not for mere mortals. And there's words coming out of my mouth. Yes, this this is, again, not for mere mortals. Welcome to the show, everybody. Episode 65, I think, is in the house. We gave you a little bit of extra Thanksgiving bonus content. It was a short show. People were like complaining, like, dude, that wasn't a full show. Dude, do you want a show? It do was you, an extra show. What is like Extra crunchy is getting extra show. munchy on yo, okay? <laughs> Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome. Thanks for hanging out with us. Again, we love you to be a part of this show. So we always ask you, and plenty of calls flow in, 1-800-616-2638 is the number you can call. Leave your name, where you're from, your comments, your perspective, and your messages. Keep them around 30 to 40 seconds tops. Otherwise, we not be able to get to them. And uh, if you do want us to incorporate or try to incorporate some live calls in some future episodes, let us know we can do that, but sometimes it can be a little tricky. You don't know what you're going to get. Yeah, I mean... Life's like I'm, a box of chocolates. I'm still... Let's let's build. I'm just gonna do it. I'm gonna build a Skype Apple Bytes. Uh, Dude, I don't want to see a video Skype. We're gonna get like tons of <laughs> people dogs. can leave us video messages. Be awesome. gonna, oh shoot! Okay. I'm doing it. Okay, you do. I'll let you filter through that. Okay, I will. I'll be I'm, happy to. You can curate that content. That's that's yeah. all you. All right, let's get to the show again. A lot of stuff going on in the Apple world. We'll talk about some of these iPhone rumors that have come out from earlier the week, but let's get to some of the new stuff. First, and in a recent report from Bloomberg, they say that Apple will be flying drones to improve the maps data and hope to catch up with Google. We've had people call in and ask us why, what's so wrong about Apple's maps? And there is nothing wrong with Apple's maps, but Beecham and I have told you plenty of times when Google has been historically more reliable, when For Google sure. has brought out, had features before Apple's integration, let's talk about a uh, transit direction, transit yes. Um, times, yes. um, and things of that nature. Just just all, all around just being correct, too. Yes. Yeah. You know well, what I mean? Just yeah. giving you the right directions. Yes. That so. is why we lean towards Google Maps. Now, I will never say never to Apple Maps. I have used it sometimes. Like when I'm in Yelp, it kind of just like automatically pushes me to Apple Maps. I'm like, okay, I'll use this. I'll give this a try. But here's some good tidbits of how Apple is going to use these drones to really try to bolster and improve the quality of their Apple Maps. Now, again, it's said to be using this to catch up to Google Maps. They'll be able to capture and update map uh, map data a lot faster than... Uh, I don't know if you guys and gals have seen some of Apple's like pictures of Apple's minivans <laughs> that are no. at, that first were rumored to be Apple Apple's car project that I was like, no, don't, no, 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 no. Like I've not seen that. So there's some like minivans that are out there. They're actually collecting the GPS data, but Apple has worked with the FAA to get approval to use these drones to improve their maps. We believe that. Uh, Apple's work. Apple, I have a question. I mean, yeah, this what's might, up? This might be very naive, but doesn't does Google use satellites? They use they a use combination GPS satellites, and what what else do they use? Well, here here's the other thing. Um, they they use a combination of services to pull all of those different resources for data. They don't use drones from at least the last time I've checked. Yeah, right. There were services or you know third party groups that they had acquired and integrated into their service for you know 3D mapping mm -hmm. the actual cities and whatnot. But we haven't heard them actually using drones. Now, if you're talking about street I mean, level, they have, they, have, they have their cars. They have Google Earth. I yeah, mean, they have, yeah, they have Google they, Earth. They, probably, they have to tap into that, I'm sure. And For sure. I think that what Apple's drones are doing is maybe it comes down to they don't have necessarily the same partnerships to be as efficient to collect this kind of closer to the ground data. Like we know uh, Google Street View, right? That's all done via car. Yeah. Apple doesn't even have an equivalent to that, really. So I'm wondering if so this, this is, is helping this is the, the equivalent the of the Apple or of the Google car driving around taking pictures. They're going to have drones. I I think drones probably be more efficient. They have definitely actually. more efficient. Uh, the thing about it also, again, we don't know exactly what they're going to use the drone for specifically, other than the fact that yeah, it's going to help pump up their maps data. But we also don't know. Look, a drone battery life right now yeah. is like 30 30 ish minutes 
40 ish minutes tops yeah i mean i can't see this <laughs> like dude being su- seriously effective right away so know? it might only be used in certain spots in certain cases but anyways um it is interesting the other thing that apple is looking to do to also improve their maps they've hired pilots that were part of amazon's primary program that is still in the works right we're talking about drone delivery drone 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 all the time they also have their own apple their own indoor mapping initiative they did they had an acquisition of a a recent company for like doing interior mapping they're called indoor.io where this would be advantageous is maybe places like uh, shopping centers museums so being able to get that done as well is pretty interesting so look I applaud. They need to step up their game. I still don't use Apple Maps exclusively. I still don't use it as my primary. But again, this is all good news that are pointing into the direction that they are taking this seriously and they're trying to build some trust back. So we'll see how it all plays out. I don't see myself just all of a sudden using them. I Maybe I use it in a different context. Like, you know... If they have... You know how Google has uh, Street View. Yeah. If they had... If Apple had Drone View... Then that would be something. Oh I hey, might, I might take a look at oh, that. Oh hey, oh hey, Beecham, <laughs> I like that. I like where you're hey, thinking. Hey Apple, you know I have ideas. Dude, you can holler at me. Seriously, holler uh, at them. Call them. I'm free for a retainer if you need that. Bar, bar mitzvah, bat mitzvahs. <laughs> yeah, and if you uh, can hire my dad too, he's yeah. a pilot. He flies Cessnas. There you go. Um, hook him up. Hook a beach. <laughs> hook a beach him up. Hook a beach him up. Also, in an email exchange that is according to be an exchange between a Mac rumors reader and CEO of Apple, Tim Cook. AirPods could be expected to ship in the next few weeks based on this exchange. Now, the emails have been verified to come from Apple's corporate servers, but here's what they say. Uh, The customer wrote to Tim Cook, and you can, I believe it's Tim at tcook at apple.com. Tim Tim Cook is just responding to emails. He does. That that was a kind of a thing that Steve Jobs used to do. That's cool. Or is it Tim Cook's secretary? (laughs) <laughs> Anyways, the customer was basically complaining like, I I was promised this wireless future. What is going on with the AirPods? Now I'm stuck waiting for these because they aren't coming out. Tim Cook responded in an email saying, thanks for your note. Sorry for the delay. We are finalizing them and I anticipate we will begin to ship over the next few weeks. Oh, so that's funny. Like almost he almost did a press release in an email to a customer. Sure. And you know what? Sometimes we have seen where (laughs) customers get maybe like a little snippet of information that they don't expect to be put out mainstream. Now, they're never going to release like the specs or images of the next iPhone. I mean, they have all the Chinese websites to do that already. (laughs) So true. just a little nugget. If this is the case, though, in a few weeks, uh, I mean, the AirPods still may not make the holiday season. If... They're shipping from factories in the next few weeks. It's still going to take another week or so to get here, to get into stores. I still believe, and I could be wrong, and you guys can all call me out later if you want to. I don't know if the AirPods are going to make it by 2016. Yeah, yeah. Based even on that timetable of that email exchange. Yeah, yeah. So it's a tough one. Are, are you let down? You know, we, you I, know I, how I feel I'm about them. I'm not going to buy them. But I'm not, so I'm not let down. I'm not going to buy them, but... I'm bummed out for consumers who are, are excited and they got the iPhone 7 and they're like, you know, now I, I don't have my I, AirPods for Christmas. So it's I too bad, bad, rich people. <laughs> it's, it's too bad you don't have AirPods. You got to wait. <laughs> like I said, I'm going to buy them and I'm going to try them. I'm 99% going to return them, but yeah, yeah. I'll still give them a chance. I, I will always give everything a chance. Uh, I'm not that person who's going to make... I, I, do, I don't want to have them hanging out of my ear though. I did see someone in the wild wearing a pair. Yeah, because we have Apple headquarters was, here. Well, yeah, yeah. And it was, a, it was a dude, and it looked like he was wearing... Like, I did a double take because it looked like he was wearing earrings. You know what I mean? Like, I was like, oh, those are trippy earrings. <laughs> yeah. Or you know, like, when people do those big rings, like those giant holes in yeah, the ears? Yeah, the plugs, the big yeah. plugs. Yeah, it kind of looked like that, too, from a distance. I was like, whoa, what... Oh, those are the AirPods. Yeah, you're kind of like, okay. So it looks like earrings. There from a go. distance. From a distance. Which isn't, isn't a bad thing, but... It's not a... I don't think it's a bad thing at all. <laughs> all right, let's just jump into some of these iPhone rumors that you may not have heard of or you may have heard of. The latest from the Wall Street Journal is jumping on kind of the rumors that we've heard that Apple will have a curved OLED screen that could come out in the next iPhone as soon as next year. 
You know what we love to call this phone. I mean, we have a variety of names for it, right? Yeah. iPhone, iPhone Future. Future. iPhone, iPhone X. X. I'm still down with iPhone X. iPhone Extreme. iPhone Extreme. iPhone 10th Anniversary. <laughs> no, or when I, when, I'm sorry. When I hear this curved screen thing, I just want to yawn. Just like, <gasps> <gasps> Dude, okay. okay. You know what? You can't yawn when I'm presenting a story for our show. <laughs> no, this, That's the, effed the, up, dude. The headline made me <laughs> yawn, not you. No, no, I know what you're saying, and you're very good at covering your tracks. But this is, I'm just merely relaying the information to the people. Thank this you. is the best part of the story that I loved because everyone used it as a headline for the shows. I ended up kind of doing it as well. But the nugget that came out of here that everyone blew up was the fact that, according to the Wall Street Journal, yes, an OLED display could be used in here. But the report says more than 10 prototypes of this phone are being considered. And people were like, headlines were literally oh, like, oh, yeah, I saw that iPhone too. 8, 10 prototypes <laughs> in the works. And I'm like, okay, in related news, Apple's working on next year's iPhone. Like, they've always done that. True, yes. This is nothing new, but it's like, oh, dang, like 10 prototypes. Ah! What do I do? <laughs> the report also says that an iPhone with this OLED screen may potentially not be released because... Look, they have a ton of product. They may not. Also, they may not have the supply of OLED displays in place. They also say that this OLED screen-based iPhone would be priced higher. Oh, than of the course. Current, yeah, no. Oh, yeah. So, like we kind of talked about in past shows, could you really imagine an Apple iPhone with three potentially three different sizes, two types of different screens, two different types of cameras, depending on the model? I, this is. This is not your mama's iPhone. No, from ten years ago. This is not. This is not your mama's iPhone from ten years ago. No, that's that's how I'm going to put it. Uh, Apple is also hoping that suppliers for OLED displays can increase their yield rates. Right now, it's anticipated that Samsung will be the primary supplier in 2017, with the hopes that companies like Sharp, LG Display, and Jap Japan Display will be able to catch up in 2018 to provide those parts. So that's one of those things. And then just a quick overview for those of you just to kind of get a refresher. The rumors as they stand right now are two LCD based screen iPhones, the current 4.7 and 5.5 inch screen sizes. So those will be LCD based. Then a rumored somewhere between a 5.1 to 5.2 inch iPhone. So somewhere in between that, that will have the OLED display. Hmm. That will be higher priced. <laughs> yes. So take that as you may. That's the latest. But this is. But as we move on, this is probably my favorite. This is not most likely one of the prototypes, but a patent that has been granted to Apple was recently revealed that showcased how Apple has been working on a foldable iPhone concept. Okay, this this is the reason why I like this. All right, people are like, what are you talking about? A foldable iPhone? Does this does this kind of call back? To the old school days of like the Motorola Razor, oh yeah, and flip phones. I was just gonna say, and could you imagine a dual screen, super thin? It would be kind of cool. Flip phone, almost like a Nintendo DS. Yeah, like the Nokia phone. clamshell, but like half the half the thickness. So, for people <laughs> that remember how cell phones used to be, there's a lot of people here that only know the iPhone as like that I type know. of form factor, just one screen, right? A f so it, on that on that article, they show kind of some of the different designs that this foldable phone can be. Um, if you can show people that are watching Beach and just sc scroll down with it. So yeah, it's a cl it's a clamshell type design. It has a metal backing, but they also talk about how this phone, this foldable phone could be flipped closed to protect the screen or another option. You could flip it the other way and the screen would actually be on externally on the outside. Hmm. That's kind of Front neat. and back. Yeah. Be like I a little uh, night alarm, like alarm clock next to your bed or something. Or no, totally. I just, I'm just kind of fascinated that, hmm, because phones are so much the same these days, if it was thin enough, would I would I consider doing a flip phone iPhone? I think I would. I, I think so too. <laughs> I think I would. Like, what is it called? The fly phone? The flip iPhone? The flippa? <laughs> the flippa? The yeah. Filipino phone? The butterfly phone. Oh, the, butterf the butterfly iPhone. But but butterfly phone. <laughs> butterfly phone. <laughs> Butterflies in the sky. I can fly twice as high. <laughs> no, that's cool because to just even today, I was like looking at my phone and we got these cool like little CNET things that like suction cup onto the back. Yeah. So you can like put your phone and it'll sit on your desk yeah. and like a little TV screen. And then I was looking around and some of the people around us have like little special stands for their phones and yeah. stuff. But this this would solve that problem. 
It could. It could just you can prop up your phone at your desk wherever. Butterfly phone. We already got the theme song ready. We got it. We got the TV commercial ready to roll. Holla, Come on. Apple, holla. Holla, dude. Ideas, yo. <laughs> Apple by Extra Crunchy. A, B, X, C. Ideas. I like that abbreviation also. Yeah, yeah. A, B, X, C. Are you down with that? <laughs> You're all, not yet. <laughs> He's like, eh, not, yet, not yet. All right. Um, and then just a little kind of, uh, maybe you guys should be uh, aware of this. I'm not here to try and freak you out or anything like that. But a new security... Uh, a vulnerability bug has allowed activation, um, the activation lock bypass on iPhones and iPads using 10.1 or 10.1.1. I'm not going to get into this super deep, but let's just put it this way. So let's say you have your phone is lost and you always, someone tries to get into it and it always has that screen that's like, oh, you know, how do I connect to this or try, try, and, try and get into the phone, right? It's called the, the activation lock. It just basically prevents anyone from really using it without the legitimate owner's position. So when a lock device is started though, okay, so let's say it's like you powered down, you powered up, users are prompted to enter a Wi-Fi network, you know, username and password. Well, yeah. there's an option for other network. And if you select that, then it asks you to type in, you know, your security information. But here's the trick. Depending on which, you know, protocol you choose, WEP, WPA2, there's no limitation on the number of characters you can punch in there. So you can just type in a ton of characters, like ton of characters, just whatever. It doesn't even have to make a difference. But at a certain point in time, <laughs> by entering like a really long string, right? Copy and paste, just like going da 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 The prompt will actually crash and then expose the device's home screen. Oh, wow. And then they can get into your, com get into your device. Well, I'm, I'm watching this video that you is... Just like typing away, right? It's in that blog post and he's just typing like an emoji over and over like again to get a in. super long username, password string of characters. That's funny. Yeah, so um, we don't know if this is going to be fixed anytime soon. Of course, it will be, or it better be. But I just want to let you know, just just so you guys, not trying to freak you out. <laughs> That's crazy. Like, how do people figure this out? Some guy like sat there and dude, just typed forever. I mean, I, I guess you could go back in history and be like, how did they figure out how to make penicillin and stuff like that? You know, <laughs> but like this is look at this dude. He's just typing. There, there, there's people out there for software, like, yeah, web yeah, security out there for a reason. Like they like. Again, we don't. We're not privy to this. I think actually, it'd be interesting to try and find someone to talk about that stuff. Totally. Because, and it's just how vulnerable all these platforms are. Quite honestly, there's always a way. There's always a way. There's around, a way in everything. Right? Unfortunately, yeah. nothing is. Unfortunately, nothing is secure right now. Not as even as much as we'd like to believe it is. Not even your heart. <laughs> Especially <laughs> not your heart. <laughs> that's that's one of the most vulnerable. <laughs> yes. Vulnerable pass. Vulnerable. <laughs> yes. It could get hurt. It can, it can be healed though. Yes. <clears throat> okay since we're getting on a cheesy note no sponsor which means more stories for you hello all right let's keep on going apple says uh remember we talked about the iphone 6s shutdown the battery issue that they had uh we talked about how apple was offering a way for you to check out uh, if you have a phone's battery that was manufactured from september to october of i believe it was was it 2015 yeah it was 2015 yeah, yeah. so check this out in a chinese website posting that apple themselves posted they described exactly what was going on with this battery issue and why it was important apple says we found that a small number of iphone 6s devices made in september and october of 2015 contain a battery component that was exposed to controlled ambient air longer than it should have been before being assembled into the battery packs what it was as exposed a result, to the air? A, a part of it, a component of it. <laughs> wow. As a result, these batteries degrade faster than a normal battery and caused unexpected shutdown errors to occur. It's important to note this is not a safety issue. So, wow. so, and this is exactly what you were talking about, what we've talked about. Remember people saying, oh, I'm around 30, 40%. My battery, my phone just shuts yeah, down. Yeah, it just shuts off. Yeah. This is exactly what it was. Wow. So in some cases, you know, whether it's extremely cold temperatures or because of this flaw, that's what it is. It's a component in the battery that was exposed to uh, what they say ambient air longer than it was supposed to be. So the good thing, it is a free replacement. And Apple has also created a way really easy to let you check your iPhone success serial number to see if you're eligible uh, for a new battery, you you kind of just got to go to the support site on Apple.com. It's, it's I think it's yeah, it's right here. Apple. If you if you can read these characters <laughs> you pull up you the can... chinese site <laughs> this for... is the link in that blog 
<laughs> if you could just read these, uh, <laughs> use translate and Google, and then you could figure this out. Oh, uh, you're oh, cracking. I'm sure there's a... Uh, Stephen Beecham providing English you the first. Chinese intel that you need <laughs> here on the Apple Bite Extra Crunchy. Yeah, it's very, very important. That's crazy. So they have to like, they had to be sealed from the air in, in order... So a piece, like let's say a circuit or an exposed connector that is inside the actual battery housing uh-huh. before they assembled it was exposed before they assembled the battery that just that just goes to show you like how complicated oh. these these devices are that they're building in a foreign Dude. country <laughs> <laughs> these are great these are great points to be made yes it also i you know people will sometimes we rip on apple it's because you know when when you we claim love we love them but when you claim to be the best and you act like you're the best then you better be the best <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Yeah, you can't leave stuff exposed that, to the air. I mean, come on. You got to be the best. <laughs> You're killing me, man. I'm like dying. That's You're crazy. You're cracking me up I'm right just, now. I'm like blown away by that. Oh, well. Blown okay. away. That's the way the world is. Hey, it's just the way the world works sometimes. Uh, in other news, we talked about how Apple was canceling their airport routers last week. A Bloomberg report did talk about this. But sometimes timing can be very ironic or just sad. JD Power just released their latest wireless routers customer satisfaction survey. And guess who came out as number one? Is it Apple for yeah. real? Wow. Maybe they're like, we should rethink this. <laughs> Apple was rated out of a 1,000 point scale. Wow. The number one wireless routers based on customer satisfaction with a point rating out of 1,000 at 876. Second was Asus. D-Link was third, TP-Link was fourth, Netgear fifth. Okay, also, just to show you, you know that most of this is most likely based on the uh, the ease of setup. It's a lot easier yeah, to yeah. set up, especially if you're in the Apple ecosystem. It and was just always talking easier with, to set them up. And talking with the device, it just works fluidly, I'm sure. Yeah, it may not have the best signal, the best power. Um, it has features that are exclusive to someone in the Apple ecosystem, like... You know, the time machine aspects, uh, you know, Airport Extreme, Airport Express Play, like audio and things like that, that are kind of built into the those hooks in that specific ecosystem. The Apple themselves for wireless routers also earned a five power circle rating for consumers. That means it's basically the best consumer product, the highest out of any company as well. Wow. <laughs> They're discontinuing the line. <laughs> <laughs> that sucks. Oh um, and I know that some people called us about it that they were frustrated. Yeah. The thing the thing is that there there's going to be a lot of ways that some of these features still work in different ways, but I just thought it made me laugh when I pulled this article up because like the timing couldn't have been any better slash worse depending on what side of the coin you're on. I mean, do you think they would rethink that after they get know. this report? I mean, that's that I, seems that seems hilarious. It is hilarious. <laughs> I think that they wouldn't just because it's all about they already we, made it's all decision. about they already made this it's all about the money right yeah yeah they have shown to <laughs> us that they're not willing to really invest in some of these like ancillary things anymore Peripheral. yeah just they're trying the monitors now it's airport base stations if it's not making enough money for them based on the bottom line or the metrics that they expect to they're just they're just basically scrapping it and this is you know like a car manufacturer when because you know JD Power and Associates I always associate yes. that with cars. Yes. The car gets gets the award. They're like making commercials about it. They're like JD Power <laughs> and Associate Award winner two years in a row. Come check out our car at the nearest dealership. Apple's like, oh yeah, we're just gonna cancel that. Um, sorry. We weren't we weren't supposed to know that they were canceling their <laughs> award winning. That's so funny. What what if they. What if that article never got out and they put out an ad like we are we are JD Power Associates <laughs> award winning wireless routers, and then like six months later at the next Apple keynote, it's like we are discontinuing our award winning yeah. JD Power Associate. We're gonna go out on top. That's that's, that's the way to that's do funny. it. In news of do not try this at home, safety tests of four hundred fake Apple chargers. You know you buy them oh, from Amazon. Yes. You know you're trying to get a yes. car charger or a wall charger on the cheap. Hell yeah. Chargers bought online, fake chargers bought online, reveal that 99% are dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> I believe it. A large-scale test of 400 fake Apple chargers. This is a report from the BBC. Were bought from eight different companies, uh, eight different countries online. The <clears throat> tests were commissioned by the UK Consumer Protection Body Chartered Trading Standards Institute. 
Of the 400 chargers purchased, just three of them had sufficient insulation to protect protect against electric shocks oh, wow. in the most basic safety test performed. <laughs> what three were those? Just so our audience. I do not know. Oh, they don't list them. I don't. I I looked at the article. I don't believe they list them. Uh, here's some great help from the institute. They provided four pieces of advice. All right, this is our Apple Byte Extra Crunchy PSA for today. Plug pins. Plug the charger into socket. Don't switch it on or connect to the device if it doesn't fit easily. The pins may be the wrong size. Have you had that before where it's like I loose chargers? No, oh no. my gosh. I haven't had that. I've had that when you've bought generic stuff. Generic faulty <laughs> chargers. Markings look for manufacturers, brands, names, or logos. Check for the C E safety mark. Uh there's warnings and instructions. But the the funny disclaimer said, Oh, a lot of these counterfeit chargers have fake markings and fake safety leaflets. <laughs> So it doesn't matter. Like a fake Apple logo or something on them. So look, if you don't want to buy a $10 charger, go to your local Apple store and buy a $30 one instead. <laughs> now, the only problem I've run into is my phone says this, this uh, what does it say? Like this, It's not compatible. Yeah, it's not compatible with this device. And I'm like, ignore it. It still works. <laughs> yeah. But I've never had a problem where... I was yeah, like there's shocked. like a authentication chip. Yeah. Basically, if you're in the made for iPhone or made for iDevices program, there's an authentication chip that is you you pay for in order to kind of say made for iPhone. I see. Whether it's a charger of all types, Apple has this program with third-party manufacturers and companies that make accessories. So that's why if you're not, basically you're not paying Apple to, and you don't have this made for iPhone sticker on your box, that's why you get that message. Okay. But it still works. Except it does work. 99% of them. Yeah, I've never been shocked by an Apple charger yet. No, so neither have I. I'm, I'm still alive, dude. Yeah. And mine are like frayed apart and like coming apart and, exposed wires and stuff i still not getting shocked <laughs> now i said don't try this at home how about just don't try this a report coming out of business insider says a former senior manager at foxconn one of apple's manufacturing partners we know the name foxconn because you heard a lot about how there were poor working conditions there for a while people committing suicide based on whether it was mental health or the poor working conditions, right? There was for about a year and a half or so, it was a hot button issue. And then Apple did an audit and had to review that, but also basically puts out a yearly report on the conditions in their, they do. In their, in their manufacturing processes and stuff. So a former senior manager at Foxconn allegedly stole 5,700 iPhones and sold them for $1.5 million. Wow. Million so dollars. So she's going to, going to jail for a long time. Yeah, they say oh, uh, the Taiwanese man, his name only reported as Sai, has been indicted over the allegations and faces trial with a potential 10-year jail sentence if found guilty. The way someone, someone's like, how, how do you just steal these? How, how do you just grab them off the factory line? The phones in question are said to have been made for testing rather than sale. Smart guy, Sai. Smart guy, Sai. And they were supposed to have been scrapped once the tests were complete. And he's like, Sai was like, Are you guys going to throw these out over here? All these iPhones? Okay, I'm just going to grab them. Hey, <laughs> so he also worked with eight other employees to help him acquire the phones and then Ooh, sell them. Ooh, so it was like a ring. Oh, yeah. Mm. You know, us, us, us Chinese folks, we like rings. <laughs> we like corrupt <laughs> rings, dude. It's just how it rolls. There That's is no, funny. there is no crime without a ring. Period. No matter what you are, you, you like, you need ring. a ring. Got you him. need a ring. If you don't have a crime ring, you're not a crime lord. You're weak. The Hall of Doom. That was a crime <laughs> ring. Um, there's so many good crime rings that I can think. of. Yeah, I mean, come on. You guys see Sopranos? It wasn't one guy. Oh, so good, Sopranos. It wasn't one guy. It was a ring. All right. Talking rings. You want to talk about the phone? You want to see what we have on the yeah, phone? Yeah, yeah. We got ring. some uh, phone calls. Ring, ring, ring. Uh, let me get this set up real quick. My okay. bad. Oh, no, it's not your bad. I'm just, <clears throat> we're just, this is a free flowing conversation and show. It can okay. go in any direction at any time. All right, here we go. Call number one Brian Beecham, Dave in Tacoma, Washington. Let's go back to 2014 and remember that Apple commercial about apps and developers. And for a second, acknowledge that iPhone's great because of its apps. So my question is, does Apple not realize that until they invest in their developers and make better, more robust apps, that people aren't going to buy the next iPhone because they don't see the benefit of any applications or hardware being pushed past the A7 chip, the iPhone 5S? Great show. Love the dynamic between the two of you. 
Thanks for the question. Thank you so much for calling. I think that when you talk about the app community and it's not necessarily, yes, you are right. Hardware is part of what drives developers forward to build apps. But I think really, quite honestly, the reason why iOS has so many apps and apps developers is because they sell the most phones. Yeah, right? that's definitely. When, you, when you're a young developer trying to make money and make an app, what's the first platform you're going to go to? You're not going to go to Windows. You're not, you're, not gonna, you're not going to go for a smaller platform. You're going to go to the biggest audience that has the largest potential for you to get your app seen, purchased, used, and then make more apps and therefore make more money. So it may be discouraging. I don't think Apple's hardware is preventing app developers. I haven't seen app developers drop off um, in any significant way, shape, or form. They're more flocking to iOS and developing apps purely because it, they sell the most phones. Yeah, I, I feel like that commercial he's talking about from 2014 is Apple being misguided. Like the powers are apps. No, it's your phone that runs those apps. And and in every case, when someone builds an app, I always see like Android people saying, "When is the when is the version <laughs> for Android going to come out?" You yeah. know, it's always for Apple first. So, yeah. so yeah, that makes sense. So it's just there. I don't think it's going to look until we see any kind of shift of a large majority of these quote unquote killer or key new emerging apps come out on Android first once in a while there are, but I can't mean, I can't even really think of a, a real solid example. Almost nine, I'm going to say 95% of the time an app debuts on iOS first for sure everywhere else before yeah. it goes anywhere else. Totally. So, okay. Next call. Hi, this is Brian from New Orleans. I've got two quick questions for you. Uh, number one, I am uh, an, an IT professional. We uh, manage around 200 iPhones. And on the new iPhones, we're actually noticing that the uh, the glass seems to scratch easier. never really seen this before in any previous models, but we are noticing that. Just wondering if you've heard anything about that. Question two, um, any complaints about the new MacBook and not the fact that the keyboard is um, MacBook Pro, sorry. Not the fact that the keyboard is, is shallow, which it is, but just the kind of plasticky noise it makes when you type on it. It's not a real pleasant sound. It seems to be louder than in years past. So I just want to get your opinion on those two things. Love the show. Thanks. Thanks for the call. In regards to the first question, uh, I haven't heard any. You, you'd know more than us, quite honestly, because you're around them, but I haven't seen anything that is significantly calling out the screen for being less durable. Me neither. Um, and in my own experience, uh, <clears throat> I haven't had anything happen just based on normal use. So I honestly couldn't answer that accurately yet. Uh, the other question, though, in response to um, the MacBooks, the new MacBook Pros keyboards, it was one of the features that I felt would be a controversial one from a standpoint of people are going to either like it or not because of what they're used to. Uh, it definitely has a more plasticky, clicky sound to it from when I've used even just the 12-inch uh, super ultra-thin, ultra-slim MacBook. But it... I guess I hate saying this at the end of the day. Apple's basically saying, we think it's better. You're going to get used to it. And if you don't like it, you can't do anything about it. <laughs> True. So it's one of those things that, yeah, it feels different. It is shallower. It might make a little more plasticky noise because of just, I think the keys are thinner and fatter. And I don't know if that plays into it. hollow underneath. Too. Yeah, yeah. And I don't know if that plays into it. It probably does. But even if we could, we can't really change anything about it. But your your observations are right on the money. Yeah, I feel like with every keyboard, there's like a little learning, you know, you have to get used to it. It just feels, the MacBooks back in the day used to have these silvery, larger plastic keys without the same amount of space between this current one. So, and people got used to that. Cool. All right, next call. Hey guys, it's Matthew from Turlock. On the last show, you guys talked about how Apple's getting out of the router business. And I was wondering if that means Apple won't be offering the time capsule anymore. I'm wondering because we have two MacBooks that back up automatically to that time capsule over Wi-Fi using Time Machine software, and it's super convenient. I was wondering if Apple will stop selling that product, and if so, what will users do to back up their laptops over Wi-Fi using Time Machine? Uh, like, can users hook up an external hard drive to uh, a third-party router or something? Thanks. 
we don't know what's going to happen once Apple uh, gets rid of their Apple Airport wireless routers. I think it's still going to be some time, you know, and they're going to support them for a while. So let's just say you only have to worry about this in maybe a year, year and a half or two when the next standard of 802.11, is it AF comes out? <laughs> I can't remember off the top of my head. I always keep on, there's so many different ones that are actually in the works. Some are commercial use, some are for consumers. Uh, but they'll find a way to make it. They'll, they'll figure out a way for it to work. Yeah, yeah. You know, the time machine backup, I plug in a hard drive directly to my computer. I'm not saying that's what you want because you want wireless backup, yeah. but there's going to be a way to do it. There, there, you can there do will it with be the a cloud way. too, right? You can do it. Just yeah, to a certain to your degree. Cloud if you pay if you pay for that service. But just not your computer yeah, to the cloud. You know, so uh, and we'll see how they address it, but we just really don't know yet. So and I for a quick little thing, I appreciate our friends on Periscope that watch this live. They can't hear any of the questions, Sorry. but they still hang with us. You'll hear it when we get our new studio back up and running. Trust us. All right. Trust. Trust the process. Hey, um, Brian, I was wondering, um, do you think rose gold is an actual girlish color? Because, I mean, I have a rose gold success plus, and I think it looks amazing. And everybody thinks it's pink, but do you think it's a girlish color? <laughs> that might be the best question of the year. Do you think rose gold is a girlish color? I Look, this whole... You're you're asking the right person. This whole... I, look, at, look at what I'm wearing, okay? <laughs> look at what I'm... Look at what dude yeah, is yeah, wearing. Yeah, totally. This whole idea of colors being associated or linked to like genders, I think as time has gone on, that has just become like a lame argument. I, it's ridiculous. Dudes wear pink all the time, and it doesn't matter. Like, if I'm wearing pink, <laughs> I got pink shoes. You can judge however you want, but I would never worry about or care about if you like the color, go for it. Who cares what other people think? It's, it's, like you know, seriously it's crazy my son is like three years old and he talks about this like daddy i want i don't want girl color so i'm like what's a girl color what yeah. are you talking about it's yeah. just a color yeah it's like this weird like i don't want to say it's a sexist thing but <laughs> yeah. you know it's, it's like this, built in a little bit from it's what they've built seen in as, thing like i mean from from when kids are born yes they're put in like a blue, blue or, pink, or pink yeah and it's like it's it's ridiculous so it's been hard for me to like convey that to my son like there's no such thing as a girl color you yeah. can wear whatever color you want yeah, he's like totally. i don't want girl colors i'm like yeah who, who's telling you this <laughs> let alone colors i mean what about floral patterns i'm like so high on floral patterns i remember my brother he was like dude why are you wearing flowers all the time man <laughs> i'm like because i like to and guess you know what? what ladies like flowers yeah guess what oh my gosh two three years later dudes be wearing flowers <laughs> that's why don't be a trend center. Go, get an all rose gold outfit. I don't even care. Like if you get made fun of, it's not my fault. I didn't tell you to do that. Okay. <laughs> I, be, a, I, be a rose gold phone for the, Halloween next year. Why not? Look, when you're younger, you have to deal with this whole like gender identity with color thing. Yes. I think as you get older, you're, are you really going to not talk to someone because they're wearing a rose gold like jacket? No, I don't care. <laughs> like I'm not going to talk to you if you're a jerk. Yeah, that's <laughs> you know. Funny. So it's just it's just part of growing up, but. I see what you're saying. You might get teased by your friends, but guess what? Own it. If, if you do get own teased, it. that's their own insecurity. It they're, is. They're concerned about themselves. It's and about I them. would say, oh, you just aren't wearing rose gold because you can't pull it off. And they're going to say, yeah, because I would never pull it off. And I'm like, yeah, I'll, I'll just keep walking now. <laughs> <laughs> just be a man enough. Be a man. Just, just step up. Rose gold. Own it. Own it. Okay. That's it, man. That's We're it. Done. That that we just had to we had to go off on our on our uh, what our color. Color, gender, identification. <laughs> uh, Color, gender, equality. Yes. <laughs> Dude, the Apple Byte Extra Crunchy covers very deep issues. Yeah. I mean, the, the logo of App Apple Byte Extra Crunchy is like bright pink. Yo, I've got, I got criticized like, like, dude, neon guy or, you know, like, <laughs> I don't care. I just love colors. I think they're dope. So, yeah. All right. Everybody, thanks so much. Again, if you want to be a part of the show, Give us a call, 1-800... Is it... Sorry, what's the number? Is it 1-8... 8... 666... No, no, that's not it. <laughs> oh, my God. That's here. the devil's number. 800-616-2638. Thank you so much. Uh, we'll, we will be here next week for episode 65. Until then, adios. Peace. Yeah. Let me turn this up. Turn up here we those go. tunes. I'm going to turn that up. Turn and up then, those uh, tunes. If I can play this little loop here. Ah. Ah. I think my speaker, my headphone speakers are blown. <laughs> you can't.
can't hear anything. Yeah, I think they're blown. Cool. All right, we good? 